Hey guys, I'm Josh, and for this project, I'm going to be just joshing around, carving a piece of wood to look like this. Kind of nervous about this one, so let's see how it goes. For this carving, I'm using a piece of basswood. I did some research into the different species of wood that would be best for doing this type of carving, and it was between basswood and poplar, and ultimately I found that people had better results with basswood, at least to my findings. I believe this is mainly due to the fact that basswood has a tighter, uh, finer grain, and it's softer and more workable. All that I'm doing here is cutting two pieces to size and then gluing them together so that the blank will be the size that I want it to be for the plaque. The size of the plaque itself will end up being roughly 15 and a half inches wide by nine and a half inches tall. And here's a picture to reference the size difference between the final plaque and the Blu-ray collector's box. You'll see here in a minute, but I used the Blu-ray collector's box itself as a reference point throughout this entire carving because there's so much detail to this thing, I didn't want to mess it up. For the carving, I started out by using my Dremel tool with an assortment of cutting wheels and little diamond burrs with the intention of using that tool throughout the entire thing. but. I wasn't having very good results with it. It was actually kind of ripping the grain up and making sloppy cuts and stuff. Just a little side note, I actually worked on this thing for a little over a month. Now, obviously that wasn't start to finish, but if you pay close attention, you can actually gauge the passage of time by how much my hair grows. Now this is where things get interesting because at this point, I had just received my wood carving chisels. And honestly, I was a little bit nervous about using them. But holy crap, do they do a nice job and they make things so much easier. I don't think I mentioned it yet, but today's video is brought to you by the top of my head. Seriously, I, I apologize, but there's not really any way to get any better camera angles on me carving this thing. So you guys are going to have to put up with seeing my dome a little longer. Anywho, back to these wood carving chisels. It took me a little bit of time to gain a comfort level with these things. But once I did, I was able to make some pretty good progress in a short amount of time. Looking back, I honestly can't remember why I was really nervous about using these things to begin with. Which brings me to a good point. If there's one good thing about these videos and these projects that I've been doing, it's that they constantly push me and challenge me in different ways to do different things that I wouldn't have done before. Just like this one, I was asked a number of months ago by my cousin to do this project. He was reluctant to do so because he saw how challenging it could be and how potentially frustrating and aggravating it could be as well. But I anxiously and somewhat excitedly accepted because I don't know if I would have done something like this on my own unless someone asked me to do it. And I'm glad he did because it really did get me out of my comfort zone and it really did push me to learn something new, something that I, like I said, might not have done otherwise. In preparation for carving this thing, I had actually considered kind of testing the waters by carving something a little simpler, but ultimately I just decided to jump right into those icy, cold, deep waters. Now, one thing I learned in the course of doing this project is that these chisels will dull rather quickly. This may be due to them being on the less expensive side. Either way, I ended up getting this little doodad called the Slipstrop, which 
you take this yellow crayon looking thing and rub it onto the sharpening block and then you rub your tool on that and it just hones the edge to make it razor sharp. And it works really, really well. Throughout the course of this carving, I ended up sharpening these wood chisels, I think twice. So I can't imagine if I was trying to carve, say, a piece of oak or some sort of hardwood like that, I'd probably have to stop like every five minutes and resharpen these things. I might have to upgrade to a higher quality set at some point, but these things are doing the trick for now. Here I'm switching back to using the Dremel tool with some diamond burrs to clean up all the carvings. This really worked well to clean up all the loose debris and little areas that I couldn't get to with the chisels. Along with smoothing out any jagged rough edges and any of the scoop marks that are left over from using the wood chisels. I'm not sure that scoop marks is the correct terminology for that, but it's a little gouge that kind of looks like a spoon. You're scooping ice cream out of a con container and that's what I'm gonna call it. So, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm calling them scoop marks. Now I'm gonna give you a little background on what this symbol actually is. If you didn't notice the Blu-ray collector's box that I'm using as a source or reference point for this carving, it says on there, Man of Steel. And that is where this symbol comes from, that movie, Man of Steel, which is about Superman. So this symbol looks like a Superman symbol, but it's actually not the Superman symbol. This is actually the symbol for the House of El as seen being worn by Jor-El in the movie. That's actually why it has such an intricate, interwoven pattern to it. It's supposed to be Kryptonian and alien in nature. If you haven't seen the movie, or if you have and don't know exactly who or what I'm talking about, Jor-El is the character who is played by Russell Crowe. There's a pretty extensive sequence at the beginning of the movie which details a lot of the environment and the wardrobe and the culture of the Kryptonians. It's all really, really cool, and it's something that I was hoping that they would explore more of in the future films. But since most of the executives over at Warner Brothers and DC in general are a bunch of idiots, I don't think we're ever going to get to see any more of that. However, if you haven't seen Man of Steel, you should definitely go check it out. It's a really cool movie and a fantastic Superman story. And after you're done watching that one, go ahead and do yourself a favor and watch Batman vs. Superman, The Dawn of Justice. And make sure you watch the director's cut because that fills in a lot of the missing stuff from the original movie. And overall, Batman vs. Superman is spectacularly underrated. I mean, sure, it has a dark tone and everything, but so? I mean, what? Not, not everything has to be like Marvel. I mean, seriously, the, the biggest crime in the entire DC movies universe is that they went away from that dark tone and they tried to, like, copy Marvel's style in Justice League and it ended up with a disjointed mess. Actually, I, I take that back. The biggest crime in the DC movies universe is Suicide Squad. That movie's just not very good at all. Actually, I'm gonna take that one back too, because I think that the biggest crime in the DC movies universe is that Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck probably aren't going to be Superman and Batman anymore in any more movies. And that is disgusting. And if you disagree with my opinion on these movies, just know that you're not in the minority. I mean, most other people think like you, but I love them, and I'll still watch them. Anywho, while I've trailed off into my wild nerd rant here, I've actually accomplished a lot with the plaque. I cut it out of the blank, and I sanded up the sides all nice and smooth. And now I'm marking out a spot where I'm going to cut a keyhole for hanging it on a wall. And I'm using the router with the keyhole bit to achieve that. Now you'd think like anyone, I would use stain to color this plaque, 
but I'm not anyone and I'm going to use shoe polish with some powdered graphite and some silver pigment powder to give it a little shimmer. And if you've seen any of my other videos where I weather guns or different toys or different things like that, which <laughs> let's, let's face it, you're not here watching this if you haven't seen the other ones I'm sure. But I'm doing the same kind of thing that I do on those where I'm mixing all the stuff together, smearing it all over, and then I'm going to wipe it off. I went over the plaque with a second coat, being careful not to wipe out all of the deeper nooks and crannies because I wanted them to have a darker appearance. I didn't film it, but after the shoe polish mixture was dry, I sprayed two coats of gloss clear coat on the entire plaque. I have a confession to make. I was being coy with you earlier when I said I was nervous about this when I didn't know how it was gonna go because I've actually had this thing done the entire time. But I had to do my intro and outro videos back to back because I forgot to do an intro video back at the beginning of this. Anyway, I was really nervous about this project because I've never done any sort of wood carving to this level before. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I appreciated the challenge because it got me out of my comfort zone. Uh, taught me something new and uh, I look forward to doing some different wood carving projects in the future So if you have any suggestions for me throw them out there and I'll try to get to them But that does it for this video as always I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Thanks <laughs>